Hey Google, define probability. This is the definition of probability. The quality or state of being probable, the extent to which something is likely to happen or be the case. Thank you. I aim to please. She's always so kind. Anyways, um, I have 10 coins here and um, I'm gonna mark one coin. And um, well, I'm gonna put all of these in this envelope. Shake it up a little bit. And what is the chance that I'm gonna take out the mark coin? One in 10 chances. Let's try. Nope. Failed. Okay, I I suck at this, so yeah, let's just let's just move on. Jesus said 2000 years ago. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. The Pharisees didn't believe that Jesus was the promised Messiah, so Jesus said if you really study the scriptures, you should realize that there are so many prophecies that are being fulfilled in front of your eyes through me. Our question is, are there prophecies that have been fulfilled through the life of Jesus Christ? If the answer is yes, then Jesus is the promised Messiah. And God himself gave those prophecies to the prophets in the Old Testament. Professor Stoner has been the head of the Department of Mathematics and Astronomy at Pasadena City College for many years, and uh, more recently at Westmont College in Santa Barbara. Professor Stoner, in addition to being an expert in the field of mathematics, has also had another interest that particularly fits our subject, for he's been interested in Bible prophecy. Dr. Stoners and 600 other university students took the challenge to calculate the probability of one person fulfilling all the prophecies that are prophesied about the Messiah. I took several prophecies and submitted them to some 12 different classes, representing some 600 college students and ask them to carefully examine the prophecies and produce the estimates that they thought were conservative. After about a year's research, they come up with values affecting the prophecies. It was prophesied that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be crucified. Now, of course, there are many babies who have been born in Bethlehem, and certainly there are many men who have been crucified. But if we take all the prophecies together in one package, now, things become interesting when we are counting the probability of one man fulfilling the, those prophecies. Dr. Stoner's calculations were conservative and reasonable. For the first round, they considered eight most well-known prophecies. That the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be crucified, that he would be betrayed for 30 silvers by a friend. After hours and hours of calculations, they found that the chance of any man that might have lived down to the 20th century and fulfilled all prophecies, all eight prophecies, is 1 in 10 to the 17th power. Now that's 1 with 17 zeros. Incredible! To help you visualize this number, if we laid these coins on the face of the UK and Ireland, they would cover the two islands 135 centimeters deep. What if I marked one coin and hit it somewhere on the face of the UK or Ireland, blindfolded you, put you on a helicopter, and uh, well, you can land anywhere you want and good luck with finding the coin, but you have only one chance to find it. What's the chance that you, you're gonna find it? It's one in 10 to the 17th power. Just the same chance that the prophets would have had of writing these eight prophecies and having them fulfilled in one man's life from their time to the 20th century. Now, Dr. Stoner didn't stop here. He continued his calculations and added eight more prophecies to his list. Now, the chance that one man could fulfill 16 prophecies is one in 10 to the 45th power. Now, um, I could describe this number to you, but I need some inspiration. Let's go. Now let's take this number of coins and create a solid ball out of them. Do you know how big would it be? 
The diameter of this solid ball would be 9 billion kilometers. That is 60 times the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Imagine me marking one coin, hiding it somewhere, then I blindfold you and tell you that you have only one chance to find the marked coin. Would that be possible? And I wouldn't hide it on the surface of the ball. You might need to dig a couple of million kilometers in order to find the coin. What's the chance for finding the coin? Almost zero or to be mathematically correct, one chance in 10 to the 45th power failures. Dr. Stoners wanted to extend his consideration beyond all human comprehension and he considered 48 prophecies. Now he calculated with his team of 600 science students that the chance of one man fulfilling 48 prophecies is 1 in 10 to the 157th power. Can you imagine that number? I mean, this, this uh, coin is becoming like um, too big to our example. You can't fit that amount of coins in our universe. We must select a smaller object. Now the electron is probably the smallest object that we can use in this example. Let's lay one quadrillion of electrons uh, side by side in a one centimeter long line. I guess that's this much. If we were going to count these electrons in this line, and if we counted Day and night, 250 electrons per minute, it would take us 7.5 million years to come from this end to this end. The electron is so small. Let's make a solid ball out of electrons with a diameter of 12 billion light years. Have we used up all our 10 to the 157 power electrons? No, we created such a small ball in a huge mass that we can barely see it. We, we, we can create so many balls like this. Now what if I marked an electron and hit it somewhere in the universe? What if I blindfolded you and sent you out into the universe in a rocket hoping that you will stop at the right place where you could find this marked electron? What's the chance of that? It's, it's, it's all zero, like that, no chance. It's impossible that one man could fulfill 48 prophecies. It's like finding that one marked electron in the universe. Unless there is a divine being who knows the future. There is such a definite proof that God inspired the Old Testament writers that even, even the universe is not large enough to hold it. And do you know why? Because Jesus didn't fulfill only 48 prophecies. He fulfilled all 300. Now why is this important for you and me? You know the fascinating thing is that not only God knows the past and the future but he keeps his promises. I'm gonna try to be short here but there is a Bible verse John 3 16 which says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God made a promise here that whoever believed in Jesus Christ shall not perish, shall not experience eternal death, but shall enjoy eternal life with Him. That's a promise. If God kept His promises, He will keep His promises. I challenge you to ask yourself, do I believe? In one of our future videos, we're going to talk about what does it mean to believe in the 21st century. So make sure to subscribe and see you next week. It is very mysterious how the universe came into being. It's a deeply mysterious and interesting question. And, and can I just interrupt? It's an old question, a very old question. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century was asking the same question. He said there must have been a time when no physical things existed, but something can't come from nothing. That was his view. It's just well, repeated by us. Something error. can come from nothing, yeah. and that's what physicists are now, are now telling us.